this work is uh, representing our approach for the semi-supervised semantic image segmentation with self-correcting networks. Uh, the work has been done during an internship in D-Wave Systems. So we mainly assume the data setup as following. We have a follow fully labeled set that has two kinds of annotations, bounding box for every object, and also have the segmentation masks for these objects. On the other side, we have a weekly labeled set that only has the bounding boxes of the objects. And the question is, how can we make a, semi, a, a, sem a semantic segmentation network utilizing these two kinds of data sets? Uh, the approach consists of mainly uh, a few things. The first thing is an ancillary segmentation network. And this network, the main purpose is to generate initial segmentations for the weak set. Specifically, we, we adjust a semantic segmentation network to accept two things, an image and a bounding boxes, and then generate a logis for us. And then a primary segmentation network that is utilizing the logis coming from here, and a couple of uh, refining approaches for this uh, logis. Let's go in details. So the ancillary model is as following. We, we adjust do simple modification for a semantic segmentation network to accept an image and bounding boxes of this of the object in the image and the output is the normal segmentation mask of, of, of the input image so we are actually learning some probability ancillary model of y the complete image given x the Im image and the bounding box so we simply uh, adjust an uh, encoder decoder segmentation network and we add an extra subnetwork that can help us to encode the bounding boxes and inject them in the network. If you thought about such a model, you should expect the performance of this model to be really high than a network just taking an input image X and output image Y. Why? Because it's actually taking some signal about the ground truth. The network now know exactly where, where is the objects to find. So the, the, the network looks like the following. This is a segmentation network that adjusted to take an image input and also bounding boxes input and learning some pixel wise prediction for this uh, image through a standard cross entropy. Once we learn this network over the follow set, we can use it to uh, extract logits for the weak set. For the bounding box encoder, uh, we design a very simple network that takes an input a 3D tensor for the uh, binary classes of the C++, C++ classes to see for the objects and one for the for the background and then just encode them more like a heat map image and you can encode it and inject it on several scales on the uh, network. Uh, an important observation here is that you will notice the injection for the encoder uh, representation is after the encoder. An important reason for that that this allows us to load one of the pre-trained models like ImageNet or whatever. If you try to inject the bounding box information in the encoder, you cannot make use of pre-trained models. So this is an important note for the performance. Uh, once we trained this uh, logit, uh, this ancillary model using the uh, Foley set, we can simply use it to extract the logits for the weak set. And we call it no self-correction approach because we are going to train a standard segmentation network B of Y given X that has data as following a fully labeled set coming from the uh, full set and a weak set with logis extracted from the ancillary model. So uh, the model looks like the following. This is a, a standard segmentation model and the, the batch has images either from full set or weak set. If the image is coming from a full set, it just go to the standard segmentation network cross entropy normally otherwise we if it's coming from the weak set we provide to the fixed ancillary model the image and bounding box and extract uh, like the potential logits for it kind of soft labels and use it as a cross entropy uh, with a cross entropy so the summary is for a fully annotated images use its ground truth for a weakly annotated images generate a ground truth for it uh, so now, so far, we, we just extracted the logis and used it as it is. So one question here is, can we actually improve this logis during the training of this new primary, primary model? We, we Specifically, we would like to be able to combine two kinds of distributions. The fixed distribution, B and ZRI of Y given the image and the bounding boxes, and B of Y given X, which is actually the current primary uh, network. So like, let, let's say you have some logics from here, logics from here, and you would like to learn some 
logit combination or relative distribution combination. So uh, we offer two kind of self-correction approaches here. One of them is a linear self-correction approach and another is a convolutional self-correction approach. So the the change here now will be as following. Uh, the, the, the normal image is just going to be here and if it's weak image while we extract the 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 the, the fixed uh, logits from the ancillary model we also take the current logits from the primary model for this weak image and we have some self correction module that is taking two kind of logits generating a new logits to be used as our ground truth so this is a refined soft labels in the linear self correction model we are seeking find a new distribution let's call it q of y given x and b that is actually close to both of b and zillary and b of y given x so close to the fixed distribution that we have already and also is good with the res relative to the new uh, the, the currently trained primary model so one one issue here is that in the early model moments in early iterations in the training of b uh, distribution we know that the, the network is actually producing garbage output, noisy outputs. So if we just uh, try to like combine both of them in a way or another, it, it will just end up producing actually noisy outputs, very, very noisy outputs. The reason is that the early iteration B of Y X is actually is actually very noisy. So one, one, one simple trick to that is just, let's say, use some alpha term to, we, to, to, to weight both of them. Something, for example, that you might anneal from a value of 30 to value of like half. And in the early model moments, you just give a high attention, give a high weight for this ancillary model. And over time, this one is going to be stronger and stronger. So you just give it more attention. So specifically, and, and remember under the factorial distribution that's typically in the, uh, in the semantic segmentation networks nowadays, we would like to find some QY given x and b that is actually close to two things so we actually would like to minimize two things the curl divergence between this q and b y given x and q of y given relative to b and z y given x and, b. and this alpha term here is just to give higher higher weight for the ancillary model in the early iterations under the factorial distribution if you try to just uh, expand and rearrange these two curl divergence you can end up to a simple formula as following which is some some constant here and kill the divisions between q and these two terms if you investigated it you will notice that this is actually the geometric mean of the two distributions now uh, to, to, to take it further to decide what kind of logits if we would like to use uh, the normal cross entropy function here uh, under the softmax activation and also under the factorial distribution function it, it, you, you can just bare pixel think about the logits coming from here logits coming from here and just rearrange it to get this simple logit equation so in, in summary all what happens eventually is you can use the logits coming from the normal model the primary model and the fixed logits coming from the ancillary model with the weighting alpha term to compute the new logits for the term okay and uh, thanks for the vectorial distribution and the softmax division function these nice results are easy to, to have. Um, in, in the paper, you will notice that we have like uh, such uh, minimization or li li maximum likelihood uh, uh, maximization. But uh, don't don't be scared of that. This is as simple as two lines of code cross entropy. One of them uh, would be the B's logic, which is actually the logic coming from the current network with the one hot encoding for the ground truth this is for the first call and for the weak data it would be the logits coming from the network with the softmax over the queues of the logits queues here is the one that we are just actually uh, combining here. Uh, implementation wise also you should be careful about the queue logits to not let the gradients grow through go through it so you need to do some stop just implementation notes uh, for the paper Okay, so uh, if you noticed in the previous work, we needed to use the alpha hyperparameter to uh, do the weighting uh, that we said. If we would like to avoid such a tuning and actually make it like simpler logic, and instead of thinking about linear way to combine them, what about just a nonlinear way to combine them? 
specifically let's say that you have here the primary logic that you have and then here is the ancillary logic that you have you can just design a very small network that takes the two kind of logics and learn how to uh, how to uh, to learn how to combine the logics in new logics so instead of the math and let's assume whatever and do the math that we just did we can just let the network do it uh, what what is the problem with that we found that we need actually careful three-stage training procedure to to make it really correct we explained it in the paper and uh, the motivation behind this three-stage training is actually coming from the same reason why we needed the alpha term that we know that in the early stage of the primary logics we cannot just depend on it as it is so we needed to train in a way that this this combining is working well uh, this is our uh, results on Pascal dataset and the most important observation here is um, okay l l let us say that the, the vanilla deep lab here is 81.2 and uh, this isn't the exact as um, the original vanilla DB deep lab we, we couldn't reproduce it sadly um, uh, uh, due to batch normalization limitation on our hard hardware uh, if you notice here our approach is producing 82.3 okay here is a no self correction and here is a linear and this is a convolutional self correction so it is very counterintuitive that a weekly or semi supervised approach is actually higher than the uh, the fully supervised approach this is very counterintuitive uh, we, we provided good reasoning and an experiment to explain why this happened. Um, uh, on, on a set scapes, you will notice also something very similar that the, uh, the, 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 the convolutional one is better than the vanilla one. Um, part of our reasoning that you will find in the paper, you will notice that uh, the Pascal dataset have 9K dataset that's actually very noisy, like uh, looking to the ground truth, for example, here. Uh, of the 9k you will notice that there is no annotation for this object but our ancillary heat map will find this object will do here good job the image here is like uh, wrongly segmented in the ground truth but the ancillary model will generate a better one so it seems that when you have we like when you have a data set that's very noise the ground truth itself such a model might play a very good role in improving things and this is one reason why one potential reason why the uh, why the, uh, the, uh, the, the the approach is better in semi-supervised setup than a fully supervised approach. Here, here are more visualizations for things that doesn't exist in the uh, in the ground truth and we are finding it. Um, eventually, finally, uh, the ancillary model. Um, in our early work, we tried to use a lot of handcrafted rules that was very wrong path till we come up with the final ancillary model idea. So don't use handcrafted rules if the network can do it. Um, as, as I said, the injection of the bounding box encoder after the encoder is very important to make use of pre-trained models. Um, in this specific data set and this setup, you notice the, the baseline itself was, was really very strong. And, uh, and this made it very hard to the couple of refining modules to really give like very strong results. In other cases, in other domains where you have some initially ancillary model that doing well, you probably will see very good jumps in the performance uh, coming from the refinement modules. Uh, the, the, one of the most important re reasons is that self-correction is very good when you have a noisy ground truth. Don't just deal with it as if everything is okay. One of the limitations clearly in our work is that it doesn't work for classes that span the wood average. Like say you have a class like Sky, you, you, the, the approach will not work well in such a case. Um, finally, you will notice that the SOTA in this problem is, is very, very high, very, very close to the fully supervised performance approach, which making the, this setup like really very hard to compete more with it. I think we made it harder for people. Um, here you will find some of my personal deviation. I, I wrote it recently uh, for the uh, how to merge two couple of KL divergents, and his, here is how to merge the logics. They are easy math, just in case you would like to try it by yourself. Thank you.